I think we need to always bring ourselves back precisely to that place where we aren't escaping, where we are present to both the beauty and the kind of destructiveness and the ugliness of, of the world in which we live. So I want you to imagine that you are in a house that is of a rectangular shape and there's a window on both sides of the house. It's a rectangle and at the very tail end of both sides is a window and if you walk to the window on the right side and you look out you can see a sea of flames a huge raging fire a kind of feeling of pandemonium and apocalypse and suffering sorrow blood tears a, a world that is being destroyed and and sent into chaos and then if you walk over to the other side of the house and look out of that window what you encounter is a kind of a paradise a, a utopian world a kind of nirvana or garden of eden or you know however that looks whatever that looks like in your mind's eye so not necessarily the biblical vision of that but a world where there is space for being languorous, for rapture, for love. And if you then bring yourself back into the center of this house, that is the feeling of sensuous knowledge. It is the awareness, the unescapable awareness, I should add, that you are in this house and the two things, the inferno and the paradise, exist at exactly the same time and how do you act in that moment what kind of awareness does that evoke in you yeah it's a sense that on the one hand there can be that impulse to escape to want to just be on the left side of the house and just look out of the paradise window and sort of be in denial of what is happening on the other end or for some of you for for many people especially in these times when activism is a very strong feature of, of social life, there's the impulse to only see the inferno, the, the fire, the ravaging flames, climate change, you know, the chaos, and to forget that there's also something beautiful on the other side of the house. And for me, I've described my heartbreak about Nigeria. And that is, in a sense, what I see when I look out of the window, the inferno window. And I could be very careful to say that I don't mean Nigeria or Africa or any parts of the world where there is suffering due to imperialism or corruption or the global order generally, that those places are some kind of hell because the window of paradise equally exists in my country, um, or in my countries, even I should say, I come from several, but uh, in this case, in Nigeria. So it's I'm not creating that kind of a dichotomy. But in any case, the suffering, the sorrow, the tears and the blood are what I would describe as being what I see through the inferno window. But on the other side, what informs the kind of utopian window for me has been actually dissent to what I see in the inferno and that sense of heartbreak that I'm describing, that sense that I needed to do something about that heartbreak. And what that led me to is dissent, you know, through or via Black feminism, Pan-Africanism, the Black radical tradition, queer studies, eco-feminism, all of these very important ideological movements, as well as my own spiritual journey, my inquiry into that which could not be described by logic and rationality. So mysticism, the poetic, and the kind of present and still moments. And through those, I have cultivated a spirit of dissent in my life. And I am speaking of more than the theoretical and the abstract. It is by far more important to me that I live a feminist life than that I write about feminism or write about living a feminist life or write about feminist theory or, or any other sort of revolutionary ideas and theories. And so this quest to live a feminist life in which I could exercise choices, ultimately leading to joy, which is a very different emotion to happiness and the sort of like Americanized global capitalist 
understanding of happiness, which is, of course, tied to consumerism and which is a fleeting emotion. Joy is an emotion which contains sorrow as well. As I see it, joy is a way of unlearning and of being present in this house, in the center of this house, if you like. Sensuous knowledge is a kind of mix of the two. It's in a sense, sensuous knowledge is the child of rage, even rather than just anger and joy. So if, if rage and joy were to, to have a baby, it would be sensuous knowledge. You could also therefore say that it's a kind of blending of a cacophony and a symphony. So your patriarchal knowledge would you know, make a, a clear distinction between the cacophonous and the symphonious. Whereas, again, what I'm showing with this image here is that with sensuous knowledge, what we're always trying to do is to synthesize and to not create dualisms and binaries. The biggest fuck you a Black woman can give to Europatriarchy is to take genuine pleasure in being alive. This is a, a phrase from the book. It also... I think applies to any woman, to any black person, female or male, and really to, to anyone who wants to say fuck you to Euro patriarchy, is to take genuine pleasure in being alive. Joy is something that emerges from being present and that that state of being present is an urgent one and one that is much needed in a world where we are facing things such as the poly crisis, which in some sense, uh, the poly crisis being this kind of overlapping of huge crises at the same time. So we have pandemics and wars and climate change and economic downturns and social inequality and huge protests so many terrifying things happening to the world all at once is the poly crisis. But the poly crisis is, in a sense, informed by what we might call a meta crisis, which is a crisis in, in the very narratives that we tell about ourselves. So a crisis in, in the social imaginary where we are kind of, we are awakening to a system, a knowledge system that has inequality baked into it, that has suffering and destruction and exploitation and deception and delusion baked into it. And the more people are waking up to that, the more there is a sense of meta crisis, of there's no suitable framing story. There's no suitable narrative with which we can try to, to unlearn and to reimagine a different world. And so instead, we're kind of stuck with these archetypical shadows and ghosts of whiteness, of masculinity, shadows and ghosts that we seem unable to transgress. And so the question is, how do we find joy amidst all of this, in this instance, this kind of negative cacophony of noise and exploitation and destruction? And the house with two windows is is an image that I encourage you to perhaps reflect on maybe in